there are people out there that can benefit from what you know. And the fact that you're still here for a reason means that there's more for you to do. And that's really when I decided to play big again. Welcome, Sharon. I am so, so, so honored to have you on the Investiva Movement because you are like, I, I watch your videos and I'm like, she is the person I want to be. Aww. And I was listening to one of your videos. You've written a gazillion amount of books. But the interesting thing is that you're actually not an author. You're an entrepreneur, which is so cool because I've written three books. My fourth book is actually coming out in two weeks. And people are like, oh, if you're so good at investing, why do you charge people for your courses? And I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur first. And when you said that, I'm like, yes, like that's what it is. People don't get it that you need the cash flow. It's like you make money and then you invest it. And it, without the money, you cannot even do personal finance. So I'm just super excited to have you. And Sharon, can you just get us started? Because I know that you're basically the driving force between the planet's two biggest brands, Rich Dad and Think and Grow Rich, which most people associate that just to Robert Kiyosaki who was your partner, but you were the force behind the brand name. And now you have your own brand to play big movements. So I just want to hear everything about this. And I know that our audience are going to appreciate so much because in this times, people are really looking for generating cash flow. And of course, investing is great, but generating cash flow is just so amazing. And I would probably get some pointers from you as well. So just please get us started. How did it all begin for you? <laughs> well, as you can tell, I've been around a long time, so I'll try and give you the Cliff Notes version. I grew up in a very lower middle class. I lived in a tiny house between my mom's beauty shop, my dad's car lot, and um, we owned rental properties. I had to scrub out the bathrooms between tenants. I swore I would never be an entrepreneur. So I wanted to become a sophisticated professional. I was the first generation to go to college. Got my degree in accounting, started my career in Atlanta, loved it, young single career woman, fast moving up the ranks, and at the ripe old age of 25, um, all of a sudden my parents started looking a lot smarter because I was working crazy hours for someone else. And I got an offer from one of my um, clients to leave and be part of a company. And I remember going back to my condo and having the pros and cons on the sheet and could argue either side, didn't help me a bit. But my hand kind of took off and wrote across the top of the page, why not? And that why not has been my driving philosophy still to today. Why not take the road less traveled? Why not do something that other people are not doing? Why not solve a problem or serve a need? Those are the two reasons to start a business. Successful businesses solve problems and serve needs. So I started my entrepreneurial career there. I started a woman's magazine, sold that. And then I started the talking children's book industry or the books with the sound strips down the side. You probably had some when you were little. Um, and that it didn't exist. So we started in 1987. We grew that to a global brand by associating with big players like Disney, Warner Brothers, Sesame Street, Marvel Comics, because parents couldn't trust a new company with electronics. Kids didn't have electronics back then. So we said, we partner with people, a brand that parents trust. And that's what really helped us explode it. And then fast forward a few years, we sold that company. And our oldest son went off to college and got into credit card debt. I was pretty mad at him, but I was more mad at myself. And that was 92. And that's really when I dedicated the rest of my career to financial literacy and financial education. Fast forward a few years, I got a phone call from my husband saying, I met this guy that has something you've been looking for. And it was Robert Kiyosaki. I met him at the, one of the very first beta tests of the cash flow game when it was still drawn on a piece of paper. And I'm the only one that got out of the rat race, but I loved it because it was exactly what I was teaching. The importance, not just of cash flow, but of buying, building, or creating assets that generate that cash flow. So instead of spending your time for money, you are investing your time to create those assets. Yeah. So if you fast forward a few years, um, you know, we, I, I volunteered with him to help him commercialize the game, which became cash flow. And during that process, um, he told me he wanted to charge $200 for it. I said, that's pretty pricey. Maybe we should write a brochure that will explain the philosophy. And that's when he asked me to be his partner when we launched the 
Cashflow Technologies is the name of our company. But that little brochure we wrote was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, and this came out in 1997 and started a 10-year relationship, 10-year ownership together in the, game, in the company. And we wrote 15 books together. And in that 10th year, we were huge, uh, phenomenal success because it was the right message at the right time. And 10 years in, in 2007, um, he wanted to go into franchise and was a model I didn't agree with. And so I made the decision to leave because it was no longer consistent with my personal branding and my personal mission. And so, you know, I, I share that part of the story because sometimes people need to close the door for other doors to open. And particularly, you know, you're young at your age, you may not be thinking about that, but a lot of people watching may have something in their life where, you know, you, can't, you have to close one door for other doors to open. A few months later, I got a call from President Bush. I was on the President's Advisory Council for President Bush and Obama. Wouldn't have had that call had I still been a rich dad. Yeah, yeah. And then a few months later, 2008, we know what was happening to the economy. I got the call from the Napoleon Hill Foundation. What an incredible opportunity. I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 19. Didn't realize the impact it had on me until I was in my 30s. But that started a long-term relationship. I'm very close to the foundation. We've written four books together, Three Feet from Gold, Outwitting the Devil, Think and Grow Rich for Women, and Success is Something Greater. It's been a great relationship and just humbling to reinvigorate the teachings of Napoleon Hill. It's been a huge honor, and I continue to just really support every effort they have in, in helping people learn the tools they need to create success and to buy, build, or create assets that generate that cash flow you're talking about. So that kind of brings you up current. That was my short version. <laughs> right. And it's just such an amazing story that many people actually, I feel like anyone who looks at these brands and brand names, you kind of have been in the behind the scenes, you, were, you didn't make yourself public. Until now, I feel like you're a little bit more public with the Play Big movement. Is that correct? Well, I was always in the forefront. Um, you know, Robert used to say he was the horn and I was the engine. Um, I've always spoken. I've always been part of it, but I, 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 um, I haven't ever. Being a celebrity was never on my bucket list, but it's just naturally evolved. And of course, after I left Rich Dad, a lot of um, new opportunities came my way. So I've had the opportunity to be on huge stages around the world. And, um, and of course, being on the President's Advisory Council gives you quite a bit of credibility and authority. So it's been, um, you know, personal development world and then the real corporate world, both have been opportunities that I've had. And this earlier this year, I was just so thrilled to be with some of my friends on the world's greatest motivators television um, show episode eight with my dear friends, um, you know, Brian Tracy, Jack Canfield, Lisa Nichols, Mary Morrissey, Les Brown, Michael Beckwith. It was just an incredible opportunity. I love being part of that. And so while I am um, definitely, I love building businesses and doing it, um, and I'd love to help people create mission brands, um, and, and it's something that is so important in today's world to really do what you need to, to make a message, to be out there solving a problem and serving a need. It's not about sharing lectures, it's about the people that I work with. I mentor lots of people right now, helping them build their brands both locally as well as globally to get their messages out and something that I just, I, I love it. And the Play Big Movement, um, as I share, I, my background was with Disney, Warner Brothers. I was always playing a big game. And with Rich Dad, when I built that brand, we were, I reached out to Warner Books, Time Life, again, playing with the big game, big, big boys. When I left Rich, I can continue doing that. But in December of 2012, I lost my youngest son and we are not supposed to outlive our kids, but it threw me into complete numbness, um, kind of putting my life in neutral. I was still working, still speaking, but certainly did not feel um, the energy or the dedication that I had prior to that. And um, about four years ago, I started thinking I should retire because it just wasn't feeding me the energy I should. And I got a lot of pushback from family and friends. I think I even heard, had him whispering in my ear, you know, you're still here for a reason, get over it. And so I share that with you because so many people watching and listening right now, you've probably had something that stopped you in your tracks. Could have been a death, a divorce, an illness, a financial setback, but you're still here. And we are where we are today because of the choices we made before today. And, and 
we've learned from our successes and hopefully learned from our mistakes. But there are people out there that can benefit from what you know. And the fact that you're still here for a reason means that there's more for you to do. And that's really when I decided to play big again. I launched the Play Big Movement as a Facebook group. And I have courses as it related to that. But it was to share with the things that I was doing when I made that decision to get back in the game. And it's been incredible because as soon as I made that decision, I took the blinders off because so many of us, we wear blinders because of the things that happened to us in our life. I had incredible opportunities come to come my way. And so can you. The issue is making yourself open to the opportunities and the possibilities. Finding that mentor that's going to help speed your way to success. And so I launched the Play Big Movement to share the things that I was doing so other people could share you know, learn from that and do that as well in their life. And it's just been an incredible um, movement, incredible group of people that I've met and a, a huge opportunity to help others and to really encourage people to stand in their own power and choose the life that you deserve and uh, be proactive, not reactive. Sharon, I'm so sorry to hear about your son. Being a mom myself, I cannot even imagine how you will deal with it. And I can truly understand how it took you years to finally see that there is a reason for you to be here and, and moving forward. And I, I, I think it needs a humongous amount of discipline and, and energy and to actually push through with it. But um, I wanted to ask you, so you have worked really like with all these brand names and a lot of people are not in the position to actually be working with the biggest brand names in the world. What is your recommendation for people who are just starting out and they really want to get in the game? Do they have to just go and reach out to the big brand names or can they actually start from the scratch and go to the top? Well, let me share my, my first book with the Napoleon Hill Foundation was called Three Feet from Gold. And in it, we talk about a personal success equation. So let me start there because it really does define the difference between trying to play it alone or playing big. And the first two are P plus T, which is your passion and your talent. Now my passion actually came from anger. I was mad we weren't teaching kids about money, but most people do something that they're passionate about in a positive way. Plus your talent, what's your education, what's your experience? I had my accounting degree, I had lots of publishing. And most of us stop there. We think we have to do it on our own, solopreneur. All right. And that's why so many people never get the success they deserve because they're trying to do it all on their own. They're wearing themselves out. They're working. That was me when I got started, <laughs> but yep. it took me 10 years to get to where I am today. It took a very, very long time. So I wish I knew how to do things differently. Well, and that's what we're, that's why I do what I do because I help people have the knowledge to be able to open those doors that can really speed your way to success. Because that P plus T is followed by times A, power of association, making sure you surround yourself with people who want you to succeed, making sure you have people on your team who are strong or you are weak, making sure that you are finding that mentor that can open doors and really speed your way to success. I love the mentoring that I do because it's people who've invested in themselves who are truly committed to invest in others, right? To really create success in other people's lives. So passion plus, passion plus talent times that power of association times A for action. Too many people know what they're supposed to do. They just don't do it. They get diverted. They get distracted. They get lazy, right? And then plus F, which stands for faith. Faith in yourself, faith in what you're doing, faith that it's needed and necessary, faith that you will succeed. And way too many people, that F is actually fear. And that holds you back. Because fear, particularly what's happening in the world right now, I mean, fear of poverty, fear of finance, fear of um, death because of the craziness. And so fear does one of two things. It paralyzes us which is what it does to most of us. We want to crawl under the covers, turn off the lights, and hope it goes away. Or it can motivate us to focus on what we want and to give us that energy to move forward to, and get that courage to keep moving forward. And that's really, when I'm working with somebody, we go through that formula in their lives. And invariably, it's usually that power of association and that faith in themselves that we need to work on the hardest. 
because it's so important for people to understand. If you remind yourself what problem you're solving and what need you're serving, it takes it outside of you and gives you that courage to keep moving. And that's so important to remember the service that you're providing to others. That's so true in so many levels because I feel like um, my business didn't really take off until I 100% believed in it and I 100% stood by it. Because before I was like, oh, I want to make money, I want to make money. And it just wasn't going anywhere because one of the parts of your equation was lacking. And until I had the faith in it, which is the, I think that is so beautifully said that I had the fear of not making money instead of having faith that I'm actually helping people. So that really speaks to me. Sharon, I know that your time is limited and I want to talk to you a little bit about your book, Think and Grow Rich for Women. And um, how, why did you choose to focus on women specifically? Well, I love that question because if, if people are familiar with the original book, Think and Grow Rich, it was released in 1937. So there were no women in business. Now, Napoleon Hill was given the charge to write it in 1908 by Andrew Carnegie. And Andrew introduced him to all his wealthy friends around the world, 500 of the wealthiest people in the world, all men, as well as quite a few people who felt they were failures. And he spent his life, 25 years, creating Think and Grow Rich. And that's why it's such a powerful book, because it's not one man's philosophy. It's really like the doctoral thesis on success. And so I honor that. But once we released Outwitting the Devil, um, you know, Don Green, the CEO of the foundation, and I started talking, and I said, you know, I'm really frustrated with women complaining all the time about the men in their way or the, you know, I just, it, so we have to change the dialogue. There's, you know, a lot of progress has been made. Is there more progress to make? Yes. But we need to start celebrating the progress that women have made. We need to celebrate the men who've opened the doors for us. And the best way to do that is to honor Napoleon Hill's wisdom, but also look at it through the eyes of successful women. And you know, for many years, I felt that this, the steps of success were the same for men and women, and I still feel that way, but we approach them quite differently. And so it was such an incredible initiative and project for me. I highlight over 300 women in the book. I highlight some of the men who have supported me in my career because it's important. It's when men and women together come together and work together, we have the greatest results. So I really wanted to change the dialogue from criticism and complaining to one of celebration and contribution. And so by writing Think and Grow Rich for Women, that's really what I, I believe I accomplished that. In addition, I was worried about the number of women who beat themselves up over this work-life balance. And I wanted to just dispel that myth because there is no balance. We're always moving. We're going forward, sideways, backwards. Um, balance belongs in the yoga studio or the dance studio. And I wanted women to wake up and realize that you have so many as You have your children, you have your spouse or your partner, you have um, your business, you have your financial life, your spiritual life, your physical life, your health. All of those things create one big life. And that's the one chapter that I added in this book that was not in the original one, the very last chapter called One Big Life. And so many women waste precious time worrying about work-life balance. So I share my, my, uh, my definition of the word to worry. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. And that has impacted thousands of women around the world. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. I happen to be a champion warrior. And when I catch myself now, I stop and I go, okay, Sharon, don't focus on what I don't want. Let's reprogram and reframe my brain and let's start focusing on what I do want. And again, you, you're flipping the switch from negative thoughts to positive. And it's really magic. And it helps you create a much better life, much happier life. Women are absolutely champions at being warriors. My mom definitely has multiple medals on that. And that really annoyed me when I was a kid that she was just spending so much time crying over things that have not happened. Like my dad or my brother hasn't responded to the phone call for like 10 minutes and she's crying. I'm like, how do you know something bad has happened that you're crying? So what do you think that really, I mean, that is my passion. Like the reason why I founded Investiva, I did got, get lost 
along the way, but it was because I was on Wall Street. I was the only girl before that I studied electrical engineer in engineering in Japan. I was the only girl in my class. I've always been the only girl and it's so intimidating and it was just so frustrating that I was always the only woman. And it turned out that women are actually better at many of these things and they're not taking advantage of it. And it, it's just been so frustrating for me to keep the movement going and getting women to actually believing in themselves to want to start becoming financially literate and financially free and taking control of their financial future and not depending on a husband or another man for that. And many women do, but many women, others, like when I advertise on Facebook, I get these comments and I get that, oh, well, I'm an old fashioned woman. I, I rely on my husband and you're just judging me. And I don't know how to respond to that. And I, I really want to take your perspective. First of all, what do you think is keeping women from actually achieving what they truly can and should? And second, what is the solution to that in your opinion? Well, the, the, the good news is women already own um, you know, more than half the managerial positions in the world. We have more than half the college graduates in the world. And right now women already control 60% of all personal wealth in the United States. So the, the fact is that if we don't take the time to educate ourselves on how knowing not just how to hold it, but how to invest it, to grow it and keep it for future, future generations, shame on us. And women outlive men, and particularly for husbands older. I mean, typically there's like seven year difference. And 80% of women over 65% will drop in their social standing if they get divorced. And many will end up in poverty because they've basically pushed away the responsibility. And that's, you know, a woman has a different credit rating than her husband. And it's important for them to understand it. But it's not just women that are struggling, it's women of wealth as well, Kian. I, years ago, before when I was writing the book, I was researching, I had a birthday party and 12 of my closest friends were there. And I said, how many of you sign your tax return without knowing what's in it? And these were all women of very financially secure. And all but one raised their hand. And I was just devastated. So we need to pay attention to our finances because many divorces, many marriages end up in divorce. And if you don't understand what your assets are, you don't understand where you are financially, you're, you're, you're literally not taking care of yourself or for your children for the future. And so it's okay to be old fashioned. I'm kind of old fashioned and my, my husband, and I've been married 40 years, but you know, I know more uh, about where we are financially and I make sure he knows where it is because it's important for people to make those conversations and those decisions together. Um, and you grow apart. Money is the number one cause for d divorce and it's, 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 it's a tragedy. And a lot of it, um, I have people say, I go to see a personal financial planner and the woman checks out. Well, make sure as a financial planner that you're including the woman when you're meeting with a couple. That's important too. Everybody has a responsibility to understand how important it is for all of us to understand where we are financially. Even if when you figure it out, or the picture's not good, it's okay. At least you know where you are and you can start taking those small action steps to create a better future. And women are in better, they're, it, the proof is in the pudding. We are better investors. The problem is we just don't do it enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's funny that every time I say that, that research actually shows that women are better investors. I get a ton of angry guys who are like, oh, we're all equal. And I'm like, it's not about inequality. It's just, and I'm not saying that you're bad. And what you said at the beginning of this interview is just that when men and women come together, that is where magic happens. And that is so true because my most successful students are actually the ones who include their whole family in the personal finance discussion because even for your children and you said that you were mad at yourself for your son not knowing about personal finance and it's just so important to just talk about money at, at home and everybody being on the same level and I think the reason why a lot of people just check out is because they ha they're not used to talking about money and they just they're like okay it's this a taboo is not subject you know I, I grew up understanding money. I grew up in an entrepreneurial home. I taught my son the things that I had learned, but there weren't credit cards when I was in college. And he got off to college and 
found all kinds of tables welcoming him saying free pizza, free money, free t-shirt, free money. And he got himself into trouble. Yeah. Um, he's as passionate about it as I am now to making sure people understand the importance of taking care of yourself, buying, building, creating income, producing assets. That's my favorite word on earth, assets. And people need to remember, if you keep changing time for money, there's only so many days in the week, only so many hours in the day. Instead, focus on the asset that can generate, and that becomes an economic engine for you. And for the people that, uh, you know, men and women together give you the greatest results, because men are much more decisive. Women are much more problem solvers. And so we tend to go back and forth. You've heard the term analysis paralysis that happens in a lot of investment clubs. Men tend to be very decisive. They make a mistake. Oh, okay, next. Women tend to define themselves by mistakes. And I go, when you have a mistake, think of it as an occurrence. It's not a definition. It's just something that happened. Learn from it and keep moving forward. That is very powerful. Thank you so much, Sharon. I am going to add the link to Play Big Movement because I feel like that is going to be a place that a lot of people who are really passionate about. Do you work with people who are already entrepreneurs or people who are just getting started? Let's clear that out. No, I have people that have multi-million dollar companies, 10 to $20 million companies. I make I work with people that are one to two million and I we also work with startups. We won't take your money if we don't think we can support you and help you. There is a, on my um, website, SharonLector.com, there is a mentoring page and we would love to support anybody that's really looking to have a mentor that's going to really focus on them and their business because that's what we do. And as I said, if you want to go to PersonalSuccessEquation.com, there's a download there that you can actually go back through that Personal Success Equation with questions and, and thought-provoking questions that help you think, well, what can I do to get to that next step of success? We'll make sure to add all these links to the description area of this video. You guys at home, you watch this. Go ahead in the comment section and tell me what is the first step you're going to take towards your big life that Sharon just talked about. What is the first step that you're going to take today? I would love to hear from you, Sharon. Thank you so much for joining the Investiva Movement. It was an absolute pleasure. And please share this video with as many women in your life as you can because that is what we're passionate about. We're here to make your money work for you and to create a better life for yourself. You guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Sharon, thank you so much again. Thank you, Kiana. And thank you for what you're doing. It's really important. Sharon, we have one tradition in our show. We ask all our guests for a silly face. A silly face? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have to go on the count of three. <laughs> three. <laughs>